product manager is a senior product manager at um, Kuda Bank. And I want to believe that we learned a lot. If you were not in the class yesterday, I hope, I sincerely hope that you already started going through uh, or you already went through the recording or the the live broadcast on YouTube. And I want to believe that you you got a lot from yesterday's session. Yesterday was super impactful. And we got to hear Olawale share his own personal um, experiences of um, or from um, how he started his career. Uh, he started from engineering. So when you talk about technical product manager, because there are people that you call technical product managers and there are others that are just product managers. When you're talking about a technical product manager, he is that technical product manager. He had he started his career as an engineer. Um, he told us yesterday how he wrote um, 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 a lot of code um, while he was in the university. And after he did that, he went on to um, continue as a founder. He founded his own clothing company. Um, which he sold, and after that, he went on to um, continue as a, you know, he started his career as a product manager, and he shared with us yesterday how he really did not need to apply for jobs because his portfolio, his LinkedIn was, his LinkedIn profile was his portfolio, and he was able to build a lot of network through LinkedIn. So um, for those of us that are here, if you're not active on LinkedIn, please make sure that you're active then, um, make it a point of duty that um, you follow Academia on LinkedIn and across all of our social media handles. Um, please don't forget to do that. Um, the platform that is bringing all of those great things um, deserves uh, some follow from you. So please sir, make sure that you do that. Um, then um, yesterday, we also looked at the introduction um, to product management the tools that are suitable for you, um, what a product manager does, how you, your a typical um, work experience where a product manager would look like, and a, a little glimpse of what they Hello, Israel. We can't hear you anymore. Creating a product roadmap, product roadmap sample. Uh, so we're going to, if you're not seen that before, um, you're going to see that uh, pretty soon. So I want to urge us um, to stay glued, stay don't touch the dial as they say on radio, uh, but then ensure that if you are not in a great place with internet or network, please ensure that you find a, a, a great spot to stay. So um, before we move into introducing our mentor or talking more about our mentor, um, does anyone have questions from yesterday? I think um, someone wanted to ask a question yesterday, but they couldn't ask. Um, so does anybody have any questions from yesterday? Perhaps you were not here and you watched the YouTube video and um, you have questions from that. Um, let's see if you have any questions. So you can raise your hand and uh, we'll call on you. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody's hand. Kabirat and is up. Oh, okay, please go ahead. You can unmute your mic and go ahead. Good evening. Good evening. How are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Um the question I have um is uh 
you mentioned something about Capstone project yesterday. Uh, we can make it like our portfolio. So mm -hmm. I was going to ask if it would be in form of a link or like a document if we want to send it to someone. That's a question. Okay, so um, you want to know if your capstone project um, yeah. can look uh okay um well for product management is, is kind of dynamic for for a product designer you can use something like behance or you can even put a portfolio on figma and then you can share a link but um for product management um just uh, apart from you know the part where you talked about capstones and etc i'm sure you heard when he also mentioned that your own profile itself is like the biggest template you can have for yourself as um, as a form of portfolio, your own profile itself. But then um, if you've worked on case studies or if you've worked on you know, some ideas that you wanna share, I think the best way is you put it in a document, turn it into a PDF, you upload it on a drive. Maybe you can use Google Drive, you can use Dropbox, make it um, available for anybody and you can share to them. You can also use, um, um, yeah, I think that's more like the most important way or the most effective way to share um, to share your 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 work, your case study, um, preferably. So I hope that answered your question. Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. You you sound quite low, but I hope you're doing good. All right. Um, okay, great. Can we get any other question from anybody? Our mentor is here. Um, let's see if we can get one more person to ask a okay, question. So if you have any question, you can raise your hand. So if nobody is raising their hands, two things. It's either everybody here is a guru already, and um, I should probably learn from everyone here, or we we just don't have questions. Yes, um, Daisy, I think you wanted to ask a question last night before your internet kicked you out of the meeting, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, hi, how are you? Good evening, I hope your day was good. Yeah, doing great, my day was good. Why is everybody sounding super low today? Can we get some energy in the room? All right, please go ahead. If you, you can still go ahead with your question. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, I was going to ask yesterday about um, product management. I wanted to know like a few types of, what exactly is project, um, product management? I want to know a few types of this product management because yesterday I was hearing a lot of things relating to the, bank se the banking sector. Can we diversify a little and talk more on it, please? Okay, so you want to know the difference between product management, project management, which which one exactly? No, I want to okay. know like the different areas in product management. Okay, all right. Um, because yesterday mm -hmm. he talked a lot about banking. So what are the are other areas that has to do with product management? Finance. He talked about finance more yesterday. Yeah, so he, the reason he talked a lot about finance um, is because um, he has more experiences or more experience in finance. Um, he has led product man, in the product management team at Paris Bank. Um, he's currently a senior product manager at Kuda Bank. So he has a lot of experience. I think it uh, should be about four years, I think, in, in finance alone. Then um, he has gotten other experiences from Truck. Truck is a logistic um, um, software as a service um, product. Then um, Powerplug, Powerplug um, is in the power industry. And I think he's done some other um, things in other industries. So um, product management, um, yes, I think yesterday um, during the Q&A when I was at the panel session, I was asking about um, transfer of um, um, knowledge transfer, I'm sure you heard when he said that um, as much as technical, in, I mean, in terms of technicalities, it could be different, it could be um, distinct, 
but the major principle still align or still applies. For example, um, you're, you are, you're going to have to onboard your users some way, somehow on all products. People cannot just use your product without you getting them to be onboarded except for websites or for blogs rather. Um, but then even at that, there's still some times where you have to do subscription. I mean, you subscribe to something or to a newsletter or something. So some way, somehow, some of these principles align or some of these um, um, structures align across several industries. But then there are people they call technical product manager. Um, what I was just doing a recap of yesterday, I mentioned that he has more experience in software engineering. So um, that makes him have a lot of um, experience with if a developer is working on a project, it's not just that person that goes and does roadmaps and then starts calling people, hello, where are we now? Um, how are we now? What is the progress? Um, I have done the timeline. How are you meeting my timeline? It goes beyond that. He understands the code itself. He understands um, um, the languages that might be used. He understands the frameworks that might be used. So he has technical experience. So most times, uh, not most times, a lot of times people like that without experience, they call them technical product managers. Um, then there are others that, um, you know, they have more experience with um, just managing products, um, maybe not technically. So um, you could be a product manager in um, the banking as a service, um, um, should I say sector now? That's what they call BAS. So an example would be Anchor, um, um, Fincra. So those are infrastructures that allows people to build um, banking products on you know their APIs or whatnot or leveraging their APIs. Then you have health tech. So you could have you could be a product manager in health tech. I have a lot of experience in health tech. I built um, um, about two. I mean, worked in about two organizations in health tech. So um, I have a lot of experience in as product. Um, Hello, Israel. We can't hear you anymore. There's somewhere that you can use. So that's a form of ed tech. Then there are other ed techs um, right now that um, that you, they, they cater to K twelve and etc. So um, you can they can help you learn. There's Nigerians. Um, there's a Dusoko. So there are quite a number of them. There's schooling cars. So those are ed tech. So they cater to the education. or education industry um then there is uh okay i think so um a typical example would be um there's cars 45 yes there's cars 45 and then um, um there's another one i cannot remember now but then uh, the typical example another example would be gg where they sell cars or something like that then there is e-commerce so there are a number of them so you could um and just like you mentioned yesterday you could decide to major but as a beginner it is not advisable that you start out your career and say, I just want to focus on health tech. Because first of all, um, the employment landscape is pretty dynamic. Um, you don't know, I mean, you're not very certain that starting out, you're going to just keep working in that space alone. Um, you know, because of course you're looking, you're looking to make money for the skills that you have. So um, you might find jobs in different um, areas. You can also probably, um, I mean, then as you continue, probably from your mid level, you can, decide to focus on maybe finance for example um, or you focus on health tech or you focus on health tech these three um, sectors right now are more like the boss and they have a lot of traction finance um, fintech um, then there is um, edutech or edtech a lot of organizations are building this advest that has 
that is more like the biggest um, startup in that space right now in Nigeria. So then there's Health Tech, um, which is growing and there are lots of investment. Example of Health Tech is Life Bank. Um, there's ERA, that's Emergency Response Africa. So there are some startups in, in, in those spaces that, are, that have a lot of traction right now. So um, those are other spaces that you can work aside um, finance. I hope that answered your question. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, great. You're welcome. Do you have any other question? No, no I don't. Okay, great. Um, any other person with any question? Okay, so um, I guess we, nobody, there are no, we don't have any other question. Okay, I think um, our mentor is having a bit of network challenge, but she's back here now. So I'll just go ahead to introduce our mentor for today and then um, we'll be able to, I think from there we can go into today's class. So um, I am sure that a lot of us have seen not just a lot of us, everybody here, you've heard, you've seen um, flyers, uh, you've heard about R and our profile, you've read, uh, perhaps you've checked out on LinkedIn, you follow on LinkedIn and you already know about R. Um, today we're, we have the honor of um, having Esther Sife um, speak to us and as, as an honorary mentor. Uh, she's a product manager um, currently working at Work Nigeria, and um, she's currently driving product innovation and um, with um, working across uh, multiple layers uh, to help Nigerian workforce find meaningful jobs. I think that's another space, uh, Daisy, that's another space to consider to look out for. Um, so she's also a city director for Product Dive Lagos. So for everybody that will be that is here, you are looking to become a product manager. Um, if you're in Lagos, there is a community um, called Product Dive Lagos. She's the city director, so um, you can connect with her after now, and um, she can help you get into the community. Um, so you can meet other product manager, I mean product management beginners like you or senior product managers that you can also you know join and you can have conversations with. There are meetings um, that you can attend, so you can network um, with other senior product managers um yeah so then um, for those that are not in lagos there are other communities i mean there are other yes there are other communities in other states um that you can also join um so but uh, you can leave a message on the group chat and we'll help you find one um yeah so she leads the product dive community in lagos um then um she's a friendly uh, product management um uh, Sorry, I'm getting, all right. Sorry, I lost my track a little bit. Okay, so um, yeah, so I was saying that um, she she's a city director for Product Dive um, Lagos and um, as a city director um, for Mainland, she, that's Lagos Mainland, she helps connect passionate product managers with expert um, product managers and then, and, you know, help you find innovative businesses that you can um, probably, you know, find connections and networks with. And um, she's also a lead volunteer for the Inspire Africa Conference, um, which is brought together by the Silicon Valley Product Group, um, that's Innovate Africa Foundation. And um, yeah, she has a few amazing organizations she's worked with, and I'm sure that she has other organizations she's going to work with um, as she continues in her career. So. Please milk welcome um, Esther Sife as she is going to be leading the conversation this evening. She's going to be speaking on um, how to create an effective product management or a product roadmap rather. So please, um, in the chat, leave an emoji, perhaps a clap or something. Just um, let her feel the warmth of your welcome. Um, please. Join me as a welcome Esther Sife. Esther, over to you, please. You can go ahead. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Israel. Everyone, can you hear me? Yes, yes. please, go ahead. Okay, okay. Good evening, everyone. It's great to be here. Um, Esther Isife. Yeah, hi, Joanna. Nice to meet you. Um, so I'm um, Esther Isife. I'm a product manager, just as he has said. Um, so I'm just going to be doing like a short or brief background about myself. So I transitioned into product management um, after I graduated from university. I studied microbiology in the university, yeah, and when I graduated, I was actually looking for something meaningful to do um, before I go for my NYSC. And so a friend of mine recommended product management. I mean, that was the first time I was hearing that word. And I was like, okay, what is product management? What do they do? Um, this was in uh, 20... 2020, yes. So I started to, to do my research on what product management was. And then I discovered that, oh, I think this is like a nice field that I can explore. Yeah, because I really love to explore things. Before uh, product management, I used to bake. So I was baking to keep myself busy. Yeah, so I wanted to explore product management and that was how I ventured into it. I started by taking courses on Udemy so I took a course on Udemy. A friend recommended Product Dive to me, but at that time I was not really um, financially buoyant to take the Product Dive course. So I mean, you have to find a way. You cannot say until you get the money before you start. Yeah, so you have to start. So I started with Udemy, and then I went on to LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, I was able to assess like a number of product management courses that gave me like very good insight on what product management was. And that was how I started to shoot my shot on LinkedIn to recruiters that I wanted an internship, even if it was even if it was for free. I mean, I just wanted an experience um, that would give me like hands-on engagement with what product management was really. So I landed my first uh, internship role in 2021 uh, with uh, the company, and that was where the whole journey really started for me. I started to really learn what product management is. I mean, when you're working in a structured organization, you understand better what product management is from your relation and interaction with other product managers, engineers, product designers, and other stakeholders. So I started to learn about product management. And ever since then, it's been an amazing journey. Uh, I'm working with another company, which is a, a human resource company as a product manager. And it's been fantastic. I mean, there's a lot to learn on a daily basis. Some days it's like, do you really know this product management? And some days it's like, oh, yes, you know what you are doing, right? So it could be like that, but it's good to be open minded. And that was one thing that I've always like tried to keep at the front of my mind. Like, just be open minded, be open to learn, ask questions, no matter how the questions sound to you, you get they might not make sense to you, but from asking those questions, you would make a lot of sense and then you will learn a lot, really. So that's like my journey, in short, into product management. Um, so today I'm going to be talking on product roadmap. Uh, I really don't know why I was asked to speak on the, on the topic of product roadmap, but I think it helped me to also learn um, quite a number of things while I was like doing some research i mean i've done product roadmap i've created a product roadmap even on my current job do you get but i would not say but it is something that i did not really see as a big deal do you get like i see a lot of people stress over it oh i need to create roadmap and all that i mean maybe because of the way i understand product roadmap and what it should be doing for me and that's why i don't really see it as a, like a big deal like a lot of people see it right but we're going to be learning about product roadmap together on this call today so um allow me to share my screen
Okay, please let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, yes I can. Okay. Uh, Is it very like visible? Can you read it? Can you read what, what's on the screen? Yes. Hello, yes. can you hear me? Yes, I can. But I think it will help if you present go to full screen. Sorry? Yes, we can see it, but I think it will help it will make it a bit more visible if you go full screen for those who are you know short sighted. I cannot see anything more. Yes. Okay, can you see it now? No, I'm only saying your picture. Can you see ro product roadmap? That's what I wanted to see. Yes, we can. John, I think it's your network. We can see it. We can see the. Oh, well. my network. Oh, sorry no, about not that. Not you, Esther. I'm talking to John now. Oh, okay. She can't see it because okay. of her network, but we can see your slide. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, that's fine. Okay, so today um, I'm going to be talking about um, what a product roadmap is, what a product roadmap is not, what makes a good roadmap, what are the different roadmap formats, how do you create a roadmap, and then finally I'll also be speaking on what tools can be used for product um, roadmap creation. Yes, yeah, so let's start. What is product roadmap? Um, a lot of people have their different definitions of product roadmap. But how I see like product roadmap is just a document that helps you like know like what plans that you have and then how you intend to achieve those plans. So you have this document and then you have plans on the document those plans including timelines and then the strategies you want to use to achieve those plans so that's how i see a product roadmap so from the definition here it says a product roadmap is a high level plan that describes how a product is likely to grow and features of the products to be developed in the near future so it's a roadmap that shows you or it's just a picture that shows you okay so i want to to travel to the United Kingdom. So how do I intend to get to the United Kingdom? So it's just a document that shows you like how you plan to get to the United Kingdom, the steps you need to take to get to the United Kingdom, the timeline or the time it will take you to get to the United Kingdom and the people that you need to partner with or work with to be able to get maybe a sponsorship or a global talent visa to the United Kingdom. Do we understand this? Yes, Mama. Okay, sorry, I'm going to be asking us like a lot of questions because I want it to be really interactive, yeah? So, um, also, um, Mati Kagan, I love Mati Kagan so much. If you're a product person, I would really encourage you to follow Mati Kagan and then get his book. So, from his book, Inspired, it, is, it defined product roadmap as a prioritized list of features and projects that a team has been asked to work on. So you have a prioritized list. There, I mean, there are a lot of things that you really want to achieve, yes, but in the next maybe one year, among all the things you want to achieve, there are some things that are top of the list. So those things that are top of the list, they are prioritized, they are prioritized, and then those features are what you put on your roadmap. So you don't just put everything you want to achieve on your roadmap, every every dot, every everything. I mean, you want even the things that you might not really achieve, even the things that do, do not make sense. No, you put the things that really make sense to you and then that are really priority to you. So as a product manager, if you're going to work on your product roadmap, you're going to come to that, you need to be sure that those are the things that would drive the, the 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 like the launch do you understand or the execution of that product that you are trying to build so whatever you you have on your roadmap should be what is going to really contribute 
to the total product at the end of the day. It should be what will make up the product at the end of the day. It should be what you want to have on the product at the end of the day. It should be what will make the product give users value at the end of the day. Do you understand? It's not something that, oh, I think it would be nice to have a call to action button here. No, I think it would be nice to have this here. Oh, I think it would be nice to have the onboarding like this. Oh, I think, it, no, those are not these kind of things you have on your roadmap. Your roadmap are prioritized list of features that helps you drive product value at the end of the day. Do you get that helps you to um, like release value to your users, your end users at the end of the timeline or the year or whatsoever timeline you are working with. Do you understand? So um, let's go to what a roadmap is not. So a lot of people have the different ideologies of what a roadmap is. So let me tell you what a roadmap is not. A product roadmap is not a stamped template. So it's not something that you say, oh, this is the template we are working with. This is how it should be. Nothing can change it. Nothing can move it. No, I mean, it's not It's not a mountain you get that cannot be moved. A product roadmap is not a mountain that cannot be. So it's not a stamp template. There are a lot of templates that can be used. There are a lot of ways you can write a product roadmap. Do you understand? It's not something that you should that you should, or somebody should make you feel like if you are not writing your product roadmap like this, I mean, you are not even doing product management. No, I mean, there's nothing like that because there's no stamp templates, do you get? Now, a product roadmap also is not a product backlog. So a lot of people think that a product roadmap is just where they have a list of endless features that they want to work on. Do you understand? That is not what a product roadmap is. It's not a backlog where you just have a list of items. Some you are not even working on them. Some have been on the backlog for months. Do you understand? There's nothing that has been done about it. And it's not coming out of the roadmap. It's just there like a stone that cannot be moved. No, that is not what a product roadmap is. It is not a product backlog. A product roadmap is not a final document. It's not a final document because it's not... It's not that, okay, this is the final document. And so when you share it with every stakeholder involved, they will just know that, yes, this is how the product is going to look at, look like at the end of the day. These are all the features that must be on the product at the end of the day. No. So it is not a final document. It's a document that can be iterated on. It's a document that you can still go back to, tweak, remove some things, add some things, based on what based on your product discoveries do you get also a product roadmap is not just for the product team it's not something that is just okay the only the product team that should have it a document that you hide you don't show other people you don't show your your stakeholders no that is not what a product roadmap is a product roadmap is not an operational to-do list like we have it like you say okay these are the things i want to achieve today I mean, how many of us, you agree with me that quite a number of us, when we write out our to-do list for the day, we do not achieve 100% of what's on the to-do list. If we can achieve it on some days, but on some days, we do not achieve 100%. Let's be realistic with ourselves. Let's be truthful. Do you get? I do not, actually, on some days. On there are days that I can follow it up and try and try even though I have to adjust the timing, move some things, do you understand? But there are some days that, on, like, in all honesty, I cannot even achieve 50%. So a product roadmap is not an operational to-do list. It's not like you have a to-do list of all the features that you need to have this year on that product, and then that's, then that's, that's all about it. No, that's not what a product roadmap is. It is a strategic, a product roadmap is a strategic document designed to help you develop a plan for your products and keep your team on track executing that plan. So it is a strategic document that helps you to develop a plan for your product and then helps you keep your team on track while executing that plan. You understand? So things can change. A lot of things can change along the way. There are things we don't even plan for that come up along the way. So it can like make you go back to your roadmap to tweak it, to adjust it, 
to um, improve on the feature, to add some more updates. Do you get? So that's what a product roadmap should be. It's a living document, a document that can always be worked on, a document that can always be iterated on. It's not something that you just have and then you don't even go back to it again at all to the end of the year. Or after you now launch, when you now launch, you now say, hey, let me even look at this roadmap. Where are we on the roadmap? After you have launched the product, no, that's wrong. That's not what the product roadmap is meant for or should be used for. So let's go to the next slide. What makes a good roadmap? What makes a good roadmap? One thing that makes a good roadmap is ongoing user or product discovery. That's one of the things that makes a good roadmap. So if you want to have a very good product roadmap, you must continue to have product discovery, user discovery, customer discovery, whatever it is called in your company or the company you'll be working with. You must continue to have continuous discovery. Why is this important? This is important because in Matty's book, I was reading Matty Kagan's book, and he mentioned four reasons why you must continue to do this. If not, your product roadmap will be like your biggest issue. It will be like the biggest headache you have. It will be like the biggest problem. Each time you look at this, you will just be sad because you will discover that you are far from, you are far from it. Do you understand? And the reason is because you have not continued to do product discovery. So the four problems that you would have with a roadmap, if you don't continue to do product discovery, is one, you have problem with delivering value. Why? Because our users are changing. Do you get what people want yesterday? Might not be what they want today. Might not be what they want next year. Might not be what they want next year. Do you understand? Two years ago, I might say, oh, I want uh, maybe a Camry. Do you understand? Two years ago, I want a Camry. But this year, I might not want that same Camry. Maybe I might want something else, maybe a Lexus or a something or another type of car model. Do you get? So people's, um, well, how do I say it? what people want actually people's desires are changing how people want their problems solved is changing and then we have the technology changing as well do you get so you have to look for ways to make whatsoever problem you are trying to solve or whatever products you have you have to look for ways to make it better for your users do you understand it's just like when i eat jollof rice yesterday and i say okay today i want to eat jollof rice Tomorrow, I might not want to eat my jello fries this the way I ate it yesterday or day before yesterday. I might want to do some orishi rishi, add some things. Do you understand? So you will not be wondering that, uh -uh, but we went to this user with the same jello fries they like, but they are not eating it. Why? Because their taste have changed. They have probably tasted something better from your competitors, from your customers. Do you understand? So users are constantly changing. And that is why you must continue to do ongoing product discovery. So you must regularly review and adjust your roadmap to stay, to stay aligned with changing user needs. And your competitors too, they are, not, they are not taking it easy. Do you understand? Nobody wants to lose in the market or nobody wants to like, like close their business because they are not selling. So they too, they are looking for ways to improve you get so some years back whatsapp was probably like a very dull platform it was a very dull platform there were no stickers i still remember some years back there were no stickers you cannot use stickers on whatsapp but no you can use stickers on whatsapp and that makes whatsapp more exciting for people to use because when you send one message that can easily send you sticker and that sticker describes everything i want to say now you can send um, voice notes on your status, your WhatsApp status. How do you think WhatsApp is doing this? It's because they are doing an ongoing discovery that's making them understand what users want. Do you understand? And makes them serve us better, makes them give us value better. So you must continue to do an ongoing product discovery. That way, you'll be able to put 
or add valuable items, features to your roadmap that would help you achieve the goal at the end of the day. So at the beginning of the year, you might have it that, oh, I want to do this like this. But by the middle of the year, in fact, the middle of the year is too far. By the end of the first quarter, you should review your roadmap again and say, okay, with what I have now, what can be obtainable like in the real sense? Like what do people really want now? What is the latest trend now? What is the, excuse me, what's the latest technology now? Do you get that way you'll be able to deliver value? The second problem that you have with a roadmap, if you don't continue to have um, an ongoing product discovery is that you will not be able to deliver a product that is usable. So the first one is value. The second one is usability. So you will not be able to discover, to, to deliver a product that is usable. Why? Because people want things that will make their life easy. People want things that will make their life easy. Some years back, there were no stoves. People used firewood to cook. But now, who uses firewood in the house? Because there are stoves. Aside the stoves, there's even gas cooker, there's electric cooker, there are a lot of things, hot plate and all those, all, all, all of these things that, that made life easy. Just assume that all these people that created, like all these things we are using to cook now, they said, oh no, let's just leave the, the charcoal and firewood. I think people like charcoal and firewood. You know, when you cook with firewood, especially jollof rice, there's this taste it used to have. I think let's just allow people to continue the firewood. People will get tired of it and people will not be, it will get to a point that people will not be able to use it. So sometimes our products can be like that firewood at the moment. Maybe the onboarding process is like firewood. Like it's like, it's, it's difficult. People are getting to the onboarding and they are dropping off. And you're wondering why, why are users dropping off? But this onboarding is easy. It's easy for you because you are the one that builds the product. So you cannot, you cannot judge users based on your own perception. And that's why you have to continue to do an ongoing product discovery. Do you understand? People want something that will be fun, easy for them. If I download an application and then I, I just get stuck at somewhere, like maybe the onboarding, the trying to sign up or log in. I mean, I'm going to uninstall that application immediately. Like I don't even have time. I don't have space on my phone. People don't have a lot of space on their phone. So you cannot come and say your product is what is like occupying all the old space and the onboarding flow is not great. No. So if you are not doing ongoing product discovery, you will not know items that you should add to your roadmap. So by the next quarter, I think we should like rework the roadmap. I think we should um, rework the onboarding flow. I mean, I think we should add some form of uh, maybe some flash screen to the onboarding flow that some colorful things to the onboarding flow that just makes a user at, at ease. Like when they just get to our, um, our page, do you understand? Like some things like that. So you will now do some product discovery to validate that if users actually find that like useful or if they will find that useful, do you get? So that's how you, um, work, you, you make your roadmap a good roadmap. Do you get by continuous, um, an ongoing product discovery. Now, the third problem you would have if you don't continue to do a product discovery with your roadmap is the problem of feasibility. So the first one was value. The second one was usability. The third one is feasibility. The problem with feasibility. So this is what we said we we're going to build in January, 2024. But by March of 2024, the cost of things have gone higher. The cost of integration is now like something else. The company, the business can no longer even afford it. That's a feasibility problem now. Another feasibility problem could be, okay, we know that we want to have these things on the product or on the um, feature you are trying to come up with, but is this thing possible? Have you, have you run it through your engineers based on the stacks they have, based on your current um, technology that you are working with? Is that a possible solution or could there be another way to build that? So that is why you have to also 
like run your roadmap by your engineers. You don't just say, oh, I'm the product manager. I'm the product CEO. Like they said, I'm the CEO of the product. That's a lie. Yo. So if you are the product manager, that does not mean you have to be the all in all and you have to do everything and then you are just going to go and give your engineers like we do with PRD and say, okay, this is it. Start working on it, start building it. No, you have to have a discussion with them. So these items we have on the roadmap, can we can we build it? Is it really feasible? Is it achievable? This kind of AI we want to add to this part of the product. Is this something that makes sense? Is this something that we can build? How long will it even take us to build? So you don't start working on something and then you think you can release it after a sprint or two sprints, and then it's taking six months, eight months. You get so those are the things that affect a roadmap. But if you continue to have a product discovery, you can understand fully well what can work, and you will add them to your roadmap as you go. And then what cannot work that are already on your roadmap, and you take them out. You take them out like there's no big deal, not a do or die affair. Do you understand? Now, the fourth thing that is going to be a problem if you don't continue an ongoing user or product discovery is that you might not be able to deliver a product that is viable. So I'm going to explain that. The first one was value. The second, usability. The third, feasibility. The fourth one is viability. So if you don't continue to have a a continuous product di di discovery. Let me tell you what is going to happen to your product at the end of the day using your roadmap that you have. That is a is an ancient landmark that cannot be moved. So this is the thing. For example, let me just use this example. I want to open a restaurant, and then I've already said, okay, in my restaurant, this is the type of food I want to be cooking. I want to be cooking only jello fries. That's all. So I started in January. When I started in January, I was cooking the low price. People were buying. But then when I got to March, I struggled to even have one customer on a day. Now that is already affecting my business. So that business is no longer viable at that point. The viability of that business is beginning to drop. Do you understand? Because you are not making sales. You are not making profits. You are cooking jello fries. You are buying ingredients. In fact, the cost of things have increased in the market, but there are no customers that are coming to buy. And then you cannot even make any revenue from that jello fries. That business is already becoming not viable or less viable. Do you understand? But how you can use your roadmap to solve it is by continuous delivery. So by February, if you have already been doing discovery, by February, you would have already find out from your discovery, your interaction with your customers that, oh, some of them don't really like only jello fries. So maybe you should add Amala. And they will do, do you understand? So the menu, some of them, they are Ajebo. Maybe you should add Indomie to the menu. Do you understand? Some of them, they just like, something that they can just eat and just be full. They just want to be full. That's their problem. Maybe you should add a wagoni and bread, agege bread, to the menu. Do you understand? Your product discovery is already giving you a lot of ideas. And then when you start implementing it or add it to your roadmap or check it with your roadmap and see where they can come in and you begin to work on them, you will discover that by March, instead of not making sales, you will be making more sales. Do you understand? Because of ongoing product discovery. And that's where your roadmap is making sense and making sense for your business as well. So that's how we should think of a roadmap as a product manager. When you look at the roadmap and you look at all the features on it, there should be features that will contribute to the value of the product, that will make the product usable, that will make the product feasible, I will make the products and the business viable. I hope you understand this. Can we still hear me? Yes, I can. 
Okay, thank you. So the next thing, I just have two items. The next thing that makes a good roadmap is that it is easily understood by all. So it's not something that people read and then it's like they are reading Greek, French, Hebrew, German. It's something that when they read, they can understand it. I share my screen of my roadmap with my product engineer and it's like, Esther, I don't understand. Like, I cannot understand, I cannot make sense of all the things you have here. That does not make sense at all. By just sharing the roadmap with them, I mean, I just, in fact, what I do is that before I have a call with my product engineers, I send it to them and I, I'm like, okay, go through the roadmap so we can now have a call. So when we have that call, you come with your questions, your ideas, your suggestions, and then we can now talk over the timelines. Do you understand? So that way, it's not like it's the product manager that is giving timeline giving deadline and saying this thing must be out by april ending and it's not workable it's not achievable achievable by the engineer so you don't work like that so your product roadmap has to be easily understood by all stakeholders people in products people outside of products any non-product person should be able to look at your roadmap and say oh i think i know where this person is going it's just like when they look at like if you have a plan for the next five years, somebody should be able to look, to look at your plan or your vision board and say, hmm, I think I know where this person is heading towards. They might not have all the glimpses, but at least they should have an idea. Do you get? So if your product roadmap is confusing for people, you don't have a good roadmap. You need to go and rework it. So I'll go to the next um, quickly. So this you can check online. There are different formats. For product roadmap personally i love to use the excel sheets the excel sheets i use my excel sheets and i just differentiate into the different quarters so i like to have my roadmap in quarters so i can review and then for accountability sake do you get that personally how i love to have my roadmap but there are different formats like i said there's no one stamp template so you can follow different formats we have the goal-based format where you have the goal, the goal, like maybe the business goal, or the company is trying to achieve. Then those goals are further broken down to how the product team can contribute in epics. And then you have like different um, quarters that you look out for in achieving those goals based on your discussion with the engineers and how fast they can build that. So there's a goal-based format, and then there's like the feature-based format. This is called NNL, the now next letter. So what am I going to, what are the features I want to be working on now? What are the features I want to be working on later, um, next rather? And then what are the features I want to be working on later? So you have your, your, your feature, prioritized list of features into now, next, and later. Do you get, so this, this is another format. So you can choose any of the formats you want to have your roadmap in. So how do you create a roadmap? Now, I just, like I said, there's no one like particular way to create a roadmap. There's no one particular way. Just like there's no one particular way to make jollof rice. Sorry, I'm using jollof rice. I know it's something that we can all relate to it. There's no one particular way to make jollof rice. The way I make my jollof rice is not the way every other person makes their jollof rice. Do you get so that's how there's no one particular way to create a roadmap so i just wrote down how i have created roadmap to share from my experience so this is how i do it my organization's goal so my organization has a goal and then from that goal my organization have we have our product goal do you get so a product goal is like a subset it's something that contributes to the end goal the end business goal the end organization goal from the product goal, we have objectives as product teams. We have our key results. We have initiative to achieve those key results. And then we have our roadmap. So I'm going to use a case study. I, I did a case study. So this case study is, is not a real case study. I just came up with something that I think we can relate to it. So this is a use case, WhatsApp. I know it's something we can all relate to it. So let's say, for example, the business goal for WhatsApp as a company or Meta is to provide a secure, user-friendly messaging platform. So now WhatsApp product team, 
there are product objective now that is actually contributing to this business goal you understand it should not be something outside the business the business goal should not be saying hey you are saying that no it should contribute to the business goal so the product objective now is to enhance user experience and functionality by introducing new features to whatsapp so what is our key results or kpi key performance indicator different companies have different way they like call this thing so some companies can be key results on kpi depending on what your company call it actually so my key result now is to enhance user experience and functionality by 40 percent in 2024 so that is my key result so how do i achieve my key results i have initiative so that's when the initiative comes in as a product team so what are the initiatives our initiatives are to improve user engagement to enhance privacy and security features to introduce new communication tools those are the initiatives we have for now that we want to work with the key deliverables or you can say sub initiatives are one to integrate integration of disappearing messaging feature introduction of multi-device support implementation of enhanced privacy controls rollout of new sticker packs and emojis so those are the deliverables that we have to achieve this initiative to achieve this key result to achieve this product objective and to achieve this business goal so everything ties back to the business goal so let's continue so what are the timelines so disappearing messages let's say we are targeting to complete it in two months based on discussion with engineers now i say okay okay they say oh we think we should be able to complete it in two months or less you get so you just say two months okay how about multi-device support say oh well, i think we can roll that out in the next um, six months or four months or let's say give and take six months so we can also test in-house and all that so how about privacy and security enhancement that's an ongoing update so we're going to like do that on a quarterly basis how about sticker packs and emojis so let's 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 see how we can roll out stickers or emojis on a monthly basis like new emojis every month that will be fun for users on whatsapp that's fine so we come up with a roadmap so this is the product roadmap so i just this is an example of a roadmap from product plan those are one of the like tools that you can use to create your roadmap. They have tools for roadmap, so you can use it to create your roadmap. So you can just like have your roadmap on a plan like this and say, okay, the first thing we should be working on, or the web team should be working on, the mobile team should be working on this introduction of multi-device support from January to April. The mobile team should also be working on rollout of new stickers and packs and emojis and all that so this is like just a pictorial representation of what a roadmap could look like and how you can have it you understand so um the next thing you should do and you should have been doing already from the beginning is to communicate and collaborate so share the roadmap like i said with development team the engineers other product managers your stakeholders so that they could also go through it do you understand you are not the only one that is going to build the product and then you are not the one alone that will be using that product so you should share your roadmap with them so that you can make sense of it together then encourage feedback collaboration to ensure alignment with user with the user needs and strategic objectives so you want to ensure that everybody is aligned the product designers they're aligned because they're the ones that will be building the interface i mean they're the ones that will determine the experience do you get so you want to be sure that you are all aligned so the next thing to do after you have your roadmap you continue to monitor and update so regularly monitor progress against the roadmap and adjust timelines or priorities as needed i've explained that a lot so you adjust the timeline or priority as you find the needs from your discovery, from your research, um, checking what your users want, checking what the competitive landscape, excuse me, is saying. So also, you want to use WhatsApp groups for real-time updates and discussion on project status and challenges. So 
you should also as you are rolling out those things you should be using it to test the updates to understand like what users will go through when they use it do you understand and then iterate and improve so once you gather feedback on new features maybe through surveys whatsapp can decide to do a whatsapp survey i think they sent me one like some days back or last week a whatsapp survey you get so if whatsapp as a company can choose to send me whatsapp survey but you that you're not working on whatsapp you can choose other means to do your survey or you can even call your customer over a phone call or you can like invite them to just like a a breakfast or a lunch depending on how you want it depending on who your customers are do you get so because you want the best feedback you want the best of answers and you want them to be as real as possible so you iterate on features based on user input and evolving market trends so um, that's how you get your roadmap to be like a living document that you are really working with and then that can really like help you achieve your outcome at the end of the day so what should you not put on your roadmap one strict timelines you should not put strict timelines on your roadmap and that's why you have to talk with your engineers and when you talk with engineers and they tell you like what i do when i talk with my engineers and they tell me oh they can complete this in the next three days when i'm going to communicate with a stakeholder or this or the person that needs that particular product or feature to be done i'm not going to tell him that they are going to complete in the next three days so i had like some rooms for okay what if what if there was a blocker what if there was a dependency so i add okay let's say give or take the next five days we should be done with this you get so that timeline is not strict the engineer are giving you a timeline yet but you also added some like room for some maybe adjustments to accommodate some issues to accommodate some blockers to accommodate any dependencies you get so it should not be a strict timeline you should not say oh two days we have to complete it if we don't complete it in two days then let's forget about the future no it does not work like that i mean and then what should you not put on your roadmap non-value items so items are not valuable features that are not valuable because you just want to have plenty things on the roadmap it's not by force to have plenty things on the roadmap i mean that does not make your roadmap impressive or that does not make your job impressive as a product manager do you get so don't add things that are not necessary on the roadmap or some things that you will not need you will only be giving yourself headache giving your product designers more work giving your engineers headache at the end of the day because those things are not really meaningful you get so that's why even when you have like features that are suggested from stakeholders and the stakeholders say oh i think it would be good for us to have these on the product you know it's easy to say but execution is not easy so that's why you have to do your discovery if they say oh they want this feature do, do users want it Remember, your stakeholder is not the person that will be using your product. Even if it's using your product, it's not the only one that will use it at the end of the day. So you want to do your validation so that at the end of the day, it's not that you have a lot of features on your product that people cannot make sense of or nobody's clicking on. You get that's a waste of time, resources. I mean, that's a waste actually at the end of the day. So these are things you should not put on your roadmap. So finally, what tools can be used for creating a roadmap like i mentioned personally i love google excel sheets i love excel sheets i use that that's like my go-to but there are other tools you can use like trello like product board product plan aha roadmap notion tables so you can explore all of this i tried product plan and um, when was that it was quite pretty easy to use i tried it i tried i just tried my hands on it for the first time you get from i like to use excel sheets but you can explore any of all these tools and then you'll be able to create a very good roadmap um, for your products as a product manager um so with this uh, i'll say we have come to an end of this 
teaching session. Thank you so much. I don't know if we're taking questions now. Thank you very much, Esther, for the amazing session. I am pretty sure that um, everybody got a lot of value from today's session. So um, yes, we're going straight into question and answer. Um, if you have questions um, regarding how to build um, a great roadmap or et cetera, please raise your hand so that you can ask your question or you can type in the comment or in the chat box um, just to see um, if you would prefer for your questions to be taken that way. So anybody with any question? Okay, I am not seeing Okay. I am not seeing any hands and um, I am not seeing any questions in the chat. Uh, let's see, is anybody typing? Okay, um, I do not think we have any question. Thank you so much. All right. Let me see if there's any before we wrap up. All right. Beautiful. Um, I want to believe that today's session has been very, very insightful for everyone. Thank you so much, Esther, for honoring our invite and thank you for uh, making it here despite um, you your busy schedule. We, yes, we appreciate you. All right. Um, for everyone who has joined today's session as well, thank you so much for making it here. Um, for those of us that are um, probably we want to um you today's session i'm sure we we are all beginners and today's session um probably um helped you learn something new and you've uh, maybe not heard about product i mean product roadmap before and you don't know what a roadmap is what a roadmap looks like and um, you are maybe confused about how to go there how to start what why is it useful or etc. Um, there are more sessions coming up. The bootcamp is coming up soon. So um, send, drop a message in the in the community um, so that you can get started in that. And then you can um, also, if you have more questions, you can drop in the group chat so that we can, um, you could get responses or get help um to your questions um community members will be able to help you then um, other mentors in the um, community will be able to help you as well and um yeah so we are pretty excited about you know your journey we're excited about um you starting your product management journey and we're super grateful that we're part of your experience uh, as you start your journey uh, into product management um the community is, is there for everybody. So make sure that you um, leverage the community, uh, make sure that um, you connect with people. You can drop your, yes, please, you can drop off. Thank you. Thank you, Esther. You can drop your um, your LinkedIn um, URL, LinkedIn profile. Thank you so much, Esther, for coming. You can drop your LinkedIn profile in the um, in the community so that people can, you know, follow you or connect with you. Um, you can also connect, uh, follow Academia on LinkedIn or on other social media handles so that you get more details. Um, the product, I mean, the um, the bootcamp for product management is starting um, just about ten days from now, and registration is ending in about five days, I think. So. Uh, make sure that you sign up. Um, the boat camp is longer, goes for eight weeks. Um, you definitely will have more opportunities to meet with more amazing mentors. You're going to be 
learning more you're going to get more insights and um, for those that are wondering how they can go about their roadmap you're going to get more hands-on experience um on how to build all of these things or how to use the tools that esther mentioned um you're, you're going to try out try them out uh, we're going to work on capstone projects that would help you um, work on them then for those that are looking to build their portfolio um i know daisy may ask, ask the question around that um, this evening you're going to be able to do that during the boot camp so you get all of the help that you need you will get um the the necessary case studies to work on that would help you build a great portfolio uh also you will get insight into how you can um you know start hunting for that job or or the first job your first job in product management so um the, the program is is pretty robust it is it is um um it contains all of the answers i mean all of the uh, yes answers that you might need to all of your questions right now so um if you're looking to sign up um you want to sign up you want to join you want to learn more about product um roadmap and you want to learn more about the tools and everything else how to get started in program management please ensure you register you can drop a message in the group and um, our team members will pick it up and reach out to you if you prefer um, to also have private conversations about how to get started in bootcamp um, you can send a message to the admins and they would uh, most definitely um respond to you and um, would it be able to help you out so um thank you very much um everybody let me see if there's any question before we close perhaps you have a question regarding the book camp and when it is going to start and etc let's see if we have any question before we'll leave okay i am not seeing any hands up and i'm not seeing any message in the chat box all right thank you very much everybody um have a great evening you can you can watch a recap on youtube um or you get the link anyways after now um just in case you like to watch the recap so um see you all at the boot camp i cannot wait to see every one of you here um also at the boot camp and i hope that um, your journey